Hi, this is Risky Phil, and today I'm starting a new series on fallacies in regards to risk. Um, so on in each episode, I have three episodes planned. I will describe what a fallacy is briefly to just give a refresher, and then I will describe the particular fallacy we are talking about. I'll show an example as I have set up here today, um, and then we'll kind of close and recap and talk about maybe a a real world example of a fallacy. Okay, so a fallacy is faulty reasoning, misleading or unsound argument. So basically it's an argument that is not necessarily true, it's not necessarily false, but it's a way of reasoning that people use that doesn't lead to the truth. So today we're gonna to be talking about the sunk cost fallacy. And the sunk cost fallacy is when you devote time, effort, energy into a goal or into a project, an object, and because you have devoted that cost, whether it's your time, effort, energy, into this goal, project, object, you are unwilling to let it go in order to go for a different goal, project, or object. So I will show that an example of that here today. Um, so red is the subject, red is the, the one that's gonna commit the fallacy, and it's red's turn. So just imagine we're in a three player fixed game, and we're a little ways into the game. And you know, we have red and blue tied with orange a little bit in the lead, and um, everyone's got a continent but red. And red has been spending some time, effort, energy, troops getting this far into a continent. And it really just needs to blast these fives in order to get this continent. So red is going to attack, get the continent, and then it's going to fortify, not protecting its borders. It's a common European turtle strategy. Okay. Now, so now it's sunk its cost into getting Europe. So now blue is going to break that continent, but not not a major cost there, right? But it's going to lose the the five troop bonus. Orange could do anything, right? We'll say that maybe orange also decides to take one of red. Okay. Now, red, it's red's turn. They decide what they're going to do. They're solely focused on, I've spent all my energy on Europe. I'm going to try to keep Europe. So they get five troops there. Now they're sinking even more cost because now they're protecting their borders even more. And then we'll just leave probably five here as well. Okay. So it's Blue's turn again. Blue decides, hey, I'm not breaking them this time. I'm making any other attack. And orange is saying, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna attack red. I'm, we can't let him hold Europe. Blue and I will eventually fall behind. But this time, orange leaves some troops here. All right, red again is solely focused on." I want Europe, Europe's mine, I need to take Europe. And that's where the fallacy comes in. So what does red do? Red takes it back. All right. We can go on and on like this with red sinking more and more and more costs, but what did we notice? We noticed that uh, two of these two were at 47 
and orange was at 51 when we started and now red's down to 35 after three turns orange is a little lower than they were because they've attacked and and blue is a little higher than they were um, so these two have remained about the same on average and red has gone down considerably right they're down 12 troops after three turns because they keep devoting their time effort energy and in this case troops into a losing battle to try and hold europe when the other two players will not let them hold europe okay so because they've already sunk so much cost into europe they want to continue sinking more and more and more cost into europe until ultimately they lose the game and you see this happen a lot this can happen with australia africa any continent it can happen on any map and it doesn't even have to be a continent that you're going for so what should red do right well they certainly shouldn't keep sink, sinking their cost into europe right they should they could go into north america and maybe they'd be further away they'd all three be, be spread out they could go down here into south america where they can defend their borders more make it more costly for everybody else they can start attacking they need to choose a different choice so that they don't slowly dwindle away and lose the game so that's the sunk cost fallacy that's where you keep sinking more and more cost into something because you're emotionally attached to something that you've spent time, effort, energy on, where the best route forward may be um, a different path, even though you have already sunk this time, effort, energy. So you should always look for not what what's my goal? I need to get my goal no matter what. You should always look for the best path forward. And in this case for red, it's clearly not working out that it's Europe. Okay. So maybe um, some real world examples of this fallacy would be something like, you know, it could be any job or any goal, but let's say you're a, a quarterback and you're maybe a Heisman trophy winner and you've devoted all your effort into being a quarterback. But when it comes time to go professional, you know, um, nobody wants you to be a quarterback. They want you to be a tight end or some other, other position, etc. But you've devoted all your time and effort into being a quarterback, and that's your goal. So you stick to it no matter what. You want to be a quarterback. Um, but then at the end of the day, you never get to be an, an NFL quarterback, and you never get to be a tight end either. You, never, you, don't, you don't play in the NFL because you, you stick to your goal no matter what, and you don't broaden your horizons and see what's actually my best path forward, what would be the best for me in the in the future. Um, so that's an example of sunk cost fallacy. Someone has sunk their time, effort, energy into a pursuit. The pursuit is not working out. It seems like it's never going to work out and they won't give up on the pursuit, just like the red player did here with Europe today. I really encourage you to, to check out other fallacies. You know, Wikipedia is great for fallacies. You can just type in fallacies and, and, and look it up and you can get many, many fallacies. I think it's been one of the best things I've learned as an adult is to, to spot fallacies because then you can kind of recognize what's true and what's not true or, or what's a bad line of argument. Um, and I think it's super valuable and I encourage everybody to do it. I am going to have two more of these coming out. And if I get a good response, I'll probably have even more of those come out as well. So uh, if you subscribe and you turn your notifications on, you'll know when they come out as well. I am Risky Phil, F-I-L, one word on Twitch, two words on YouTube. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you want to hear more fallacies or any fallacies in particular you'd like to hear or anything else you would like to see. Thanks for watching. Bye.